In the previous series, Jin Young met with General Yuk and he told the boy that his father had escaped from prison. Yuk gave Jin Young powers that allowed him to investigate his father's disappearance. In the prison cell in which his father was, he saw inscriptions in an ancient language on the walls, and he needs to decipher them. On the way, he met a stranger who wanted to kill Jinen on the orders of his master. Jinen was able to defeat the stranger, and after the defeat, the stranger fled Jin Young, and Guan spent the whole night in the library to find clues about the disappearance of his father Ko and decipher the inscriptions. The boy learned that his father studied the technique of absorbing the energy of heaven and earth and controlling the soul. And his department excelled in this technique. When they decided to look around again in the room in which his father was, all the inscriptions had already been erased. They reported everything to the minister. And the minister gave Jinnin the highest rank, so that no one would interfere with his investigation, and he could find his father. The minister told them about the heavenly blood clan that was interested in the works of his father and the emperor. The last emperor went missing, and no one knows where he is now. But there are rumors that he is collaborating with the Heavenly Blood Clan. The minister asked Jin Yang to go to Jiang Hu and look into the matter, and he also asked me to deliver the letter to his friend Seong Shin Guan. The stranger decided to attack Jin Yang one more time by challenging him one-on-one -on -one in the forest. Jin Yang won again, and now this man had to take Jin Yang and Guan to his master to understand why they want to kill him. Along the way, Jin Yang noticed that a man named Weiji Hian was following them. He asked Jinen to help him catch the Satanists named Yoma. In return, he offered to help with the Sky Blood clan. Rumors about these strangers reached the ruler of these lands, and the old man wanted to meet Jinen personally. Jinen and his team were stopped in a tavern located near the forest. Weijihan said that in Jiang Hu he is usually called Sword Black Knitted. You this nickname is his calling card, thanks to which everyone will recognize him. Jin Young and Guang said that they heard this nickname for the first time and did not know anything about this person. Weiji Hian began to feel very uncomfortable and was very surprised that these guys had never heard of him. The big guy was the only person who heard about this guy. He knew that the abyssal black sword was a member of the eight main stars. An old man suddenly entered the tavern with his soldiers and interrupted the work of the guys at the table. He carefully examined all the guys who were sitting at the table and wanted to find a guy named Jinen. They turned on him and began to look at this old man. Jinen did not understand why this stranger came here with guards and what he wants from them. One of the soldiers turned to the old man and said that these were the guys they were looking for, and the old man smiled when he realized that they still managed to find them. Weiji Heon immediately recognized this old man. But in order to make sure he is not this old man, Master Peng Gi Han of the Peng family, Weiji Han did not wait for an answer from the old man, and immediately realized that it was he who was the guy was very surprised that such a significant person personally came to meet them. Gi Khan looked at Weiji Han with contempt, and asked the young man who he was and why he spoke so boldly with the master. Weiji Han introduced himself to the master and gave his name. Then he called his nickname, the Black Sword of the Abyss, and the big man looked at the guy very surprised. Gihan opened his eyes and carefully looked at this guy. He said that he heard about the master of the eight main stars, and said that these masters are not inferior to people from major factions in their skills, and then he asked the guy why he came here. Weijihan did not tell the reason why he came here, but said that he had business in this place, so he ended up here and then asked what brought the master to this place, because the way here was hard. Gikan said that he had a business with a man in blue clothes, and he had been looking for him for a very long time. Gihan asked the boy if he was a human named Jinan. The guy at that moment was very surprised. He did not expect that such a respected person would look for him in order to offer cooperation. Gikan bowed to the guy, and said that for starters, he wants to express his gratitude to him for conveying the news of the death of his family in the forest. And now, thanks to him, I can't quickly start an investigation. Gi Khan very quickly ended with words of gratitude and wanted to quickly come where he said that he had come here for a reason, and he needed to find out the information that Jin and owns. Gi Khan sat on a chair right in front of them and started asking the guys if they saw the criminal who killed his family in the forest, 
Or maybe they noticed any traces, Jinen said, that he saw absolutely nothing but corpses. They tried to look around the crime scene, but couldn't find anything. Gi Khan was not very pleased with this answer, but he could not blame this guy. The old man talked about how he knows that Jin Young is a government official. Jinen did not understand what this old man was leading him to. It was a surprise that he knew about his status in society, and the guy decided to ask what Mr. Gi Khan really was. The old man said that he had many questions. He once again asked the guy if he saw anything at the crime scene, then asked why the official was heading towards Bekma Fortress. The old man wanted to know why the official was accompanied by Weiji Han Jin Young, said that it would be very difficult for him to answer all these questions, and would not want to do it. He did not understand why the old man was trying to find out all this. Gi Khan was unhappy that the guy did not want to answer all these questions, and decided that he needed to be dealt with in a more radical way, and that he would have to beat information out of him. He took hold of the hilt of the sword with his hand, and began to pull it out of the scabbard that hung on his back. Jin Young was very shocked that this gentleman exposed his own, and began to threaten with a weapon just because the guys did not want to answer his questions. Gi Han was serious and was willing to fight against Jin Young just to get information out. He thought it was the best way to have an honest conversation. Jin In warned the old man that such methods are barbaric, and if he wants to fight them, then it will not end well, and it is better to remove the weapon. Before it is too late. Wiji Han was scared when he saw that Jin In was very serious and ready to fight. He tried to free him and said that the old man is on the level with 10.000 masters, who are the best warriors on the continent, and it is better not to joke with him. But Jinen felt absolutely calm and did not worry about the fact that there might be problems with this old man, and he wanted to know how strong the Jiang Hu masters were, so the guy could test his strength and understand how strong he is. Ji Khan smiled and realized that the battle would still begin. Gi Han decided to immediately strike with his sword from above and attack the guy first, but Jen Yeon quickly reacted and managed to accumulate energy in her fist in order to block this blow. Jinin turned his fist into steel, and thanks to this, he was able to calmly repel the blow of the sword without taking any damage in return. Jinin was very surprised that his body can be so strong, and even a sharp sword is not able to damage him if he correctly controls his key energy and calmly manages it. They started their fight. They struck each other with a quick blow and deftly evaded them or blocked them. Jinin was very surprised that this old man is so good at fighting and wielding his sword despite his old age. He still moves very fast and fights like a real master. But the guy still repelled all of his attacks and for now tried not to counterattack. He wanted to tire his opponent as much as possible by blocking his attacks and dodging them so that he would spend all his energy on attacks Gi Khan was insanely surprised that this boy was able to block all of his techniques with his bare hands and not spend a lot of energy on it. Gi Khan accumulated a huge amount of electrical energy in his sword and wanted to deliver a very powerful blow, after which few people managed to survive. Jinan was very surprised when he saw that the old man had such incredible power and he needed to dodge this blow in time. The old man struck with his sword, and after that, Lightning began to fly in different directions in the tavern. Jinan made noise in time to dodge this blow and did not receive damage. But nevertheless, he understood that it was so. But it was very strong, and if he misses it, then the battle will be over. Gihan continued to strike intensely and try to touch the guy with his sword, and Jin Young had no other choice but to accumulate magical energy. The guy used his fire magic to counter this old man's electrical energy. The guys carefully watched how this battle was going on, and Guan said that he had fought shoulder to shoulder with Jinian several times. But for the first time, he saw that he fought so skillfully and showed all his abilities in battle. Wijihan was amazed that this guy is so good at martial arts, and it was the first time he saw such a young martial artist who mastered several difficult techniques at once. They continued their battle, inflicting powerful blows on each other and at the same time repelling them and dodging. They still could not hit each other with Uranus and break through the defense. Sertan realized that the boy needed to be given a hint and asked him to be careful because an incredible stream of magic flows through the sword of this old man. If he makes at least one mistake, then the guy will die immediately. Ginnan was not going to lose this battle. 
and found a good moment to deceive the old man and break through his defense, he was able to deliver fiery punches to his face. Gikan withstood this blow, but it still took a lot of damage. He was able to ferry the fire from his body and throw it to the side. The old man was very pissed off that he didn't manage to land a single accurate blow on his opponent, but the guy was able to just hit him with a fiery fist right in the face. The old man began to accumulate all the anger, uh, in his swords and put huge energy into his next blow. After this blow, a huge beam of light was poured out of the tavern and the fight was moved to the street. Now they fought there. Jinan was able to block this attack by placing a fire shield in front of her, but was still knocked back 15 meters. Gikan at that moment was still in the room. He looked at the guy holding his sword in his hands and told him that if he wants to continue the battle, he needs to constantly be focused. Jinan was not going to give up, and this battle made him feel the excitement and thirst for victory. He used one of his fighting techniques and summoned the fire sword. Ji Khan was delighted when he saw that his opponent wielded such a unique technique, it made the old man smile and understand that he was fighting a worthy opponent. They again entered the battle and were ready to face each other in this duel. When their swords touched in the courtyard, there was a huge explosion. It was like a flash of lightning and fire. After their clash in the yard near the tavern, there was a very large explosion, and nothing could be seen, because there was smoke around. This smoke gradually began to dissipate and fly away. When the smoke gradually began to disappear, Jinan appeared in it. He stood and held his hand to his face. He looked very tired. The guy at that moment began to realize what kind of opponent he was fighting. He realized that it was actually a 10.000 master who owns incredible martial art techniques, and he was glad that he fought such a worthy opponent. Gi Khan approached the boy and praised his skill in martial arts. He said that it was amazing, the old man himself looks very cheerful, and seemed that he was absolutely not tired after this battle. Gi Khan confessed that he was very impressed that the boy could still stand on his feet despite direct attacks. Gi Khan asked the boy what he needs to do in order for the guy to tell all the information he knows about the wagon that was attacked in the forest. It was important for him to find out because his relatives died there. Jinan lowered his head down and closed his eyes, and sighed heavily. He said that he had several rules, and the most important of them was to ask the old man not to take any action on his own. And his second request was that no one should know about this conversation. Gi Khan scratched his beard in order to make a decision, and asked the boy if it is necessary for him to fulfill these conditions, and why he wants it so much. Jinan answered the old man that these are his conditions and the only way he can tell him all this information that he knows, and explained that this is all only because the story itself is very unpleasant for him, and he does not want them to know everything. At the entrance to the tower, the master was waiting for them. He was informed that he had guests, but he could not even think that Jinan himself would visit him. The guy understood that the effect of surprise caught this gentleman by surprise. The warrior approached his master and sat on his knee. After that, he asked if they needed to deal with these strangers, but the master replied that they should not be touched because these wars are very strong. They cannot be dealt with so easily, Jinan. His team climbed up the stairs to meet this gentleman and find out everything from him. This gentleman received guests in his tower and seated them at the negotiating table. He said that he had not seen Master Peng for a long time and the old man replied that they had not seen each other for fifteen years since he quarreled with Yun Gong Hu. He was very surprised that the old man still did not know this and said that he would never forget these times in his life. This was the first and last time he received help from old man Gi Khan. He looked at Jinan and said that he was overly happy to meet the guy and made his assumption that the boy had something to do with him. He asked the guy if he is a member of the Golden Guard, and the guy replied that everything is exactly like that, and his name is Ko Jinan. The boy said that he came here to see the owner of the fortress because of the incident of treason that occurred in the palace. The old man at that moment looked at the boy very carefully and was surprised by such a request. Jinan said that he knows that the master of the fortress has many connections with groups of dark warriors scattered around the world. This could be very useful to him. He said that the masters of the spy detachment are now operating in secret but the boy still managed to find information that they are related to the Jiang Hu warriors, and among them 
there are those who are members of a criminal organization. Jin Young came here to get information about who he's connected with or dating. These people he needed to know. The owner of the fortress looked at the boy with a very sly look and began to touch with his fingers. He said that he could not help the boy in any way, and then asked him why they should fulfill his request, which does not bring them any benefit. He said that Jin Young and his friends had already attacked their soldiers twice in the forest and tried to cause them and the association very big problems. Jin Young said that he has nothing to do with the association and their problems are not in his competence, so he asked to put it on the back burner and said that at least he would try to forget the incident by double attacks on him. The owner was unhappy that the guy was behaving very arrogantly and asked him what would happen if they refused to help him. Jin Young replied that he didn't feel any joy in shaking hands with a person like the master of the tower, but that Bakma Fortress had many connections with criminal organizations, and he simply had no choice. So he turned to these people, Jin and warned the owner of the tower, that if they couldn't solve this problem by dialogue and agree on something, then he would have to use his force, and this could lead to bad consequences. Gi Khan intervened in their dialogue and said that if this guy starts to rampage here, then he will cause a lot of damage that will have to be restored for years, and this would be very disadvantageous for the Bekma Fortress. He insisted that it would be better for this guy to help. This would be the right decision. He assured the owner of the fortress that he had encountered this boy more than once, and he could be trusted. The owner of the fortress was very surprised that the old man interferes in the affairs of this guy and is now his ally. He replied to them that Gi Khan's support makes him think, after all, the boy really has good skills in martial arts that can harm his fortress. He crossed his arms over his chest for a couple of minutes. He thought, while sitting in silence, and eventually told them that he accepted Jin Yong's offer. The guy asked for another request. He said that the master of the fortress and his people need to investigate the death of Yong Sang Hyun, the former palace counselor who was killed three years ago on the main street of Beijing. He said that he would not be able to deal with this case because the Golden Guard should investigate it, and the guys from the Golden Guard should know more information on this case. Jinan replied that in the investigation left by the Golden Guard from a number of spies, it was recorded that he died after beating a drunkard. But the guy does not want to believe in this stupid version. Jin Young was sure that someone deliberately covered up the truth about what happened to his uncle. They ended the negotiations, and after that they were kindly escorted to the exit to leave the palace grounds. Before the topic, how to get out of here. Jin Young stopped at the exit and felt something suspicious. He turned his head back. Near the entrances to the fortress are the owner, and saw them off with his eyes. I liked Jinan. This person, and he felt some kind of catch in him, as if this person could easily betray or deceive them at any moment. On their way, a man appeared who introduced himself as the messenger of Nakangyo. He knelt down on one knee and greeted Commander Wijihan. The messenger said that he managed to find out that Yoma and the three exorcists of Hyul Hyul crossed Dewan, and at the moment these people are approaching. Chionamsen Mountain. Wijihan asked the messenger why Yuma and three other exorcists were gathering in one place on this mountain. It was most logical for them to act alone. The messenger replied that apparently this was due to a person named Yu from the sect of Ten Swordsmen. Gihan found out the name of this person and asked the messenger if Yu Tai Chung from the sect of Ten Swordsmen is now on this mountain, and the latter answered that everything is exactly like that. Vijihan asked the passive one how many warriors are now on that mountain and the messenger replied that somewhere around five or seven warriors, are they all following them on their tails? Wijiheon said that they would immediately leave for Cheonamsan Mountain and asked the messenger to send a letter to this place in order to find out the situation and understand what is happening there now. He alerted his team that they are now in big trouble. They need to hurry to this mountain in order to fix everything. Three people were standing in a large room with red wooden pillars. They were discussing that Young Jia Sung was moving secretly from everyone. A man in red clothes crossed his arms over his chest and asked in a displeased voice why these people act mystery and pretend that they are engaged in noble deeds. The old man replied that they were chasing the exorcist Hyol Hulgu Yang Mugyong, now finally understood what the essence of the matter was, 
and he found out that they were hunting for exorcists, but did not understand why they needed it. The old man made his guess and said that maybe they were chasing the exorcists for justice or to unleash suppressed ambitions. A third man in blue asked what their role was in this case. Would they just be watching from the sidelines? The old man said that they will make sure that these people roam all over the world to get to the exorcists, but in the end, they will not be able to find them. He said that they were here to manage the world situation, but not to applaud. Watching the others perform, and the man in blue asked what their plan would be. The old man said that if they chase exorcists, then their job is to chase these guys. He all hull exorcists are not the same as they used to be. They have become much stronger. They don't act. Regardless, someone is clearly behind him. Gu Yang asked, Is there a faction capable of dealing with these guys? The old man told them about the Heavenly Blood Clan, which is one of the strongest clans on the continent. This clan appeared not so long ago, and little is known about it in the world. But they say that this clan has outstanding power and will very quickly gain its political status. He said that the best options are to go right behind this clan and collect fruits from the trees they will grow. The man made a conclusion from their meeting and said that their plan is to get rid of the exorcists, who are now the headache of the whole Jiang Hu. The old man supplemented this plan with the fact that the position of Zheng Jai Sung will also be weakened. And if they manage to get benefits from there, then their plan will be ingenious. The men listened to this plan and decided that they agreed. But there was one question. Who exactly are they going to send there to carry out this task? The old man suggested that it is for this case that they use their secret weapon and try it out in practice. They were surprised that he wanted to use this weapon right now. They thought it was too early. But the old man tried to convince them that if they hold this weapon for too long, then they cannot miss the right moment to use it. It was the perfect opportunity to try the weapon in real combat and see what it can do. And the old man said to send a support squad after the main weapon so no one has to worry about what might happen. To begin with, they decided that they need to send at least one squad to see what he can do. When they didn't finish their negotiations, the last thing the old man said was that they needed to go to Shanxi. A huge staircase led up the mountain. Jin Young and his group of assistants climbed this staircase. But when they nevertheless climbed the mountain, all they saw here was the dead bodies of soldiers. They realized that they had come too late and had already dealt with the soldiers. Wiji Hyun couldn't believe that they were too late. His whole squad of fighters was killed. He understood that it was all because of the exorcists, and Yoma Jinin sensed a very dangerous black energy. It was in the air. He immediately paid attention to it. He summoned a fairy and asked Selfina to look for some people in the mountains and said that there must be someone there. The fairy was dissatisfied with the fact that she was again forced to work and asked the owner if she did this task. She could then do nothing. He replied that she would then be able to rest. Jinen asked the demon Sertan to search the area for energy that he does not feel because the demon could do this with ease and Sertan said that he would look for something now. Ouiji Hon said that unfortunately, the person who could take them all to the mountains died. Guan replied that the situation was not easy for them to still be able to cross these mountains, and old man Gi Khan replied that people would die, but first you need to start moving. Jin Young said that if there is a dangerous path ahead, then he will go first in order to protect everyone in case of danger. When Yinen and his team climbed up the mountain, they saw that a fierce battle was going on on the mountain. A man in red clothes professionally destroy warriors from the Ouijihan detachment. This man was armed with two Daisho swords. He killed a whole detachment of opponents alone. This killer cut off the heads of all the opponents that came across in his path. He did not leave anyone alive. He wanted to help his comrade and attack one of the soldiers from behind. But a green magic arrow started flying towards him from the forest. When the arrow was already very close to his face, he paid attention to it. This man at the last moment fight with his sword from this arrow. He looked into the forest and saw that the art in the blinking green light, Fairy fired her magic bow at this man. She said she tried to block his attack and was going to pierce his body. This man was very surprised that from such a great distance, someone could release such a huge amount of energy and turn him into an arrow. The wars continued to fight and strike. 
They understood that their forces were not enough to resist these bloodthirsty killers, but nevertheless, they did not fight to the last drop of blood. They delivered quick sword strikes to test the enemy's defenses, but they didn't succeed. Old Man Gi Khan suddenly appeared from the forest. He accumulated the magical energy of electricity in his ball and wanted to help the soldier cope with the enemy. He struck a strong blow with his sword at the enemy, and the enemy came with a jump back. He did not understand where the man with the lightning strike came from here, and this began to frighten the killer. The old man began to fight this guy and strike him with his sword, but the doctor skillfully defended himself from his attacks. After another attack, the enemy was able to defend himself by placing a block and then inflicting a counterattack, due to which the old man flew back. Gi Khan was very surprised that this man repelled his attack and still survived. He did not understand how this man had the strength to withstand such strong attacks. The assassin took a fighting stance from which it was easy to launch any attack and carefully began to examine his opponent holding two sharp blades in his hands. Gi Khan threw his sword over his shoulder and said that the rumors that had reached him about the fact that the High Hul exorcists lost their power and are no longer as strong as they used to be. The exorcist assassin made a swift dash forward as he kicked off the ground and prepared to unleash his next attack. Gi Khan was able to block it there in time and prevented this person from harming himself. They baptized their swords and stood opposite each other, trying to endure the tension. The old man said that killing the people of Yung Jai Sung is a very immoral act, and he will not be forgiven for this. Gi Khan started again, accumulating lightning energy in his ball, and the opponent had already ceased to withstand such a strong voltage. The exorcist felt that his energy was much weaker than the energy of the old man. His black magic runes began to disappear and lose the energy of lightning. He understood that he did not have enough strength to resist this old man. Jin Young and Guan were fighting with steel opponents at that moment, and the guy stopped for a moment to see how strong this old man was. He was amazed at his energy, ready to watch how Gi Khan uses his lightning technique every time Jin and thought about the fact that the old man was only close in strength to the Ten Thousand Masters, and he imagined how strong the true representatives of the Ten Thousand could be. The soldiers turned to their commander, Widzi Hon, asking him to help them deal with these opponents as soon as possible, so that they could move further. The soldier said that they need to find Elder Yu, because he is now all alone without the support of the rest of the soldiers fighting most of the Yuma group alone. Jinan thought about the fact that he constantly feels a strange aura around him, and he realized that there is a master and the sects of ten swordsmen not far from them. And Yuma, he made the assumption that this black aura belongs to one of these two guys Jin Young said that he would have to be the first to clear the way, and the guy told him that he was not against such a plan, and asked Jin Young to take care of everything. Jin In turned to Master Peng, in order to understand whether he would go further with them or not, and the old man replied that they should go without him. Gi Khan wanted to finish the fight, and one-on-one -on -one deal with his opponent. His enemy was wounded after the last blow that the old man dealt to him. One of his swords was broken, but he was very angry and ready to fight on. The old man could not let this man go alive, and he wanted to finish his job, so he asked Jin Young to go without him. He said that he would catch up with them soon. Guan took the guy by the shoulder and said that this old man is quite enough here to fight off these enemy units, so he offered to go along with Jin Young. There was a fierce fight on the top of the mountain near the water Master Yu single-handedly fought against a whole crowd of opponents, but there were only more enemies all the time, and he felt that it was becoming difficult for him to resist them. He was a real master of martial arts and was well-versed in combat techniques, so he could fight off several opponents at once. He cut his throat to one of them. As soon as one of the enemies fell to the ground, a new enemy immediately appeared in his place. Master Yu, during the fight, thought that if this battle had been before when he was still young, and this would not have presented him with huge problems, but now he was already very old. He had to spend a lot of energy fighting this, and the fighters, he decided to take on five opponents at once and tried his hand. He had not fought for a very long time. It was a good occasion. Remember all your martial arts in practice. He delivered precision strikes to his opponents and immediately killed them. From the crowd and enemies, Yoma appeared with a very strong black energy. 
His energy was black and green in color, and he accumulated it in his fist. He struck the old man with a very strong blow, but Master Yu still managed to block the blow with his sword in time and did not receive any damage. Yoma looked Master Yu to Chung straight in the eyes and said that today he would take his head with him. Master Yu laughed in the face of his opponent when he heard it. Then he said that Yoma still can't catch the old man's water and put it just a little harder. He already allows himself to open his mouth. Master Yu pushed his opponent back to give himself time to accumulate new energy. The old man laughed and said that even if he was destined to die here today, he would still take all these scoundrels with him to the next world. Master Yu again, I took up the sword, otherwise kill my opponents, by piercing their bodies with a sharp blade. They tried to surround him and throw several blows from the back at the same time so that the old man did not have time to repel them. But instead, the master began to accumulate energy in his ball. He used one of his techniques called piercing blade. This technique allowed him to make a large beam of light that killed everyone who got in his way, and it was impossible to resist against this better light. Immediately after this technique, he did a second move called Sky Strike, and his sword emitted incredible light energy. Master Yu for nothing was able to crush three opponents at once, and they could not even understand what happened to them because light blinded their eyes and they felt incredible pain, after which they died. After applying this technique, a large amount of smoke appeared on the top of the mountain after the explosion. When the smoke dissipated, Master Yu An appeared from him. He was very tired after using such energy-consuming techniques. Suddenly, Yoma appeared in front of him and wanted to hit him with his green fist. This blow was supposed to be sudden and deadly. The old man managed to dodge this blow and did not take any damage, but Yoma was very cunning and he immediately delivered another blow, after which the old man flew back. He could not predict this sneaky blow and received damage Master Yu could hardly stand on his feet after taking such a heavy damage, but he still did not hesitate and could continue the battle. He was immediately attacked from two sides by the rest of the opponents. They wanted to drive him into a trap. Master Yu understood that he was running out of strength and could lose in this duel. He felt that he needed support if someone did not come to his aid right now then he would hardly be able to stand against these opponents for a long time. At that moment, Junior appeared. He noticed that the old man was very hard to resist all these people and called the fairy Selfina to him so that she would use her magic technique again. Selfina's arrow hit the bodies of the enemies very quickly and helped the old man fight them off. Selfina killed enemies with her sharp arrows. She does it so quickly and imperceptibly that they didn't even understand what was happening. It seemed to them that the wind got into their body. It was the magical fairy arrow. One of these soldiers was surprised that magic arrows were flying into them from nowhere and did not understand how to resist against these arrows. He used his black magic in order to protect himself from these arrows. Selfina continued to strike him with her sharp arrows from different sides, and the warrior did not understand how he needed to defend himself from these arrows, because he simply did not see them. He tried to take a closer look at where these arrows were flying from, but he could not notice anything. He could not see Selfina. She realized that the past could not hit her opponent and decided to use a magic spear in order to surely break through the defense of her opponent. She was very angry that these people behaved very cruelly and meanly. Master Yu was very surprised when he saw that someone came to his aid, and then he saw a big green explosion. It was a surge of strong magic. Jinin approached the master from behind and asked him if he was Master Yu Tai Chung of the Ten Swordsmen sect. The guy came closer and said that they were sent here by Commander Weiji Heon so that they could help the old man deal with opponents. Jinen saw Yuma and asked the master not to interfere in the battle. He said that this person and they want to deal with it personally. Yoma was very surprised when he saw that help had come to the old man. He did not expect that someone would get here and did not understand why this guy did not want to deal with him personally in battle. They were at a great distance from each other and felt that a battle would soon begin in which only one would survive. Yoma felt that there were internal injuries in his body that prevented him from using all his strength and he was afraid that he would not be able to dodge a blow to his opponent. Yoma was very disappointed that he again failed to kill the old man, 
even though he was very tired, and it seemed that he would be able to kill him today. Well, everything did not go according to plan. When these people intervened, Jinan began to move towards his opponent in order to strike him with the first blow. Jinan wanted to punch his enemy right in the face, but Yoma managed to block this punch and grabbed his fist with his hand. He looked at Jin Young and understood that all his plans were now blown to the wind, and he just wasted time and a large number of people. One of the fighters was very angry that these newcomers were so arrogant and wanted to kill his master, so he took his sword and immediately went to these guys to attack them. But Guan used his teleportation technique to move right in front of this fighter in order to kick him. Guan delivered a very strong blow to this soldier in the chest, after which he broke several bones in him and forced him to fly back. Guan landed on the water after the impact and prepared for the next attack. He got into a fighting stance and said that it would be a lot of fun for him to have fun with a weakling. They began to slowly approach each other in order to probe the opponent's weak points and understand which one is better to use first. Water scattered in different directions due to the constant attacks that took place around the soldier still did not understand where he was flying into the magic arrows. He did not know how to fight them off. Fairy Sylphina said that people who did not sign a contract with her or do not have a contract with other spirits at all cannot see her. Therefore, her attacks are invisible to them. She thought about the fact that we get magical powers from her master. She definitely won't get tired, and therefore she should properly warm up in this fight using her magic blows against these opponents. She hadn't had so much fun for a long time, and therefore today she was ready to use the master's magic in order to fight these scum. Jinan was distracted from the fight with his opponent Yuma for a few seconds because he noticed that Silphina suddenly decided to use so much profound energy in such a state, it would be very difficult for him to maintain his technique. He was very surprised that the fairy, who on normal days all she does is complain that she is tired and does not want to follow orders, now she decided to use a lot of magical power in order to fight. This is not like her. He was reassured by the fact that his opponent was already very battered and tired. He received an internal injury in a battle with a master from the Ten Swordsmen sect, and therefore is not able to fight at full strength. Jinan made the decision that he needed to finish his opponent as quickly as possible before he recovered and accumulated enough energy to fight back. He unleashed his fire martial arts technique and started throwing out quick fire strikes, but Yoma was still a god to fend them off. Yoma understood that not a single place could resist a full hit of such a blow. But even when dodging, the force of the blow is felt. Even a high defense technique that can reflect the sword with bare hands is useless in such a situation. After Ginnan's blows, he felt that the veins in his arms inside his body begin to twist, and this is the first time he has encountered such attacks. Yoma regretted that he was already very tired and could not give a worthy rebuff to that guy. If he had enough internal strength, he would not have suffered so much. He wanted to kill the old man as soon as possible and get out of here because he could not fight for a long time against these guys. Yoma regretted that he lost a lot of his brothers here and they are now dead, but thanks to his black magic, he could resurrect them and collect them again. All he had to do now was fight off Jinan and avoid here, but getting away from this guy would not be easy. Ginnan kept throwing very fast attacks which he had to constantly dodge and expend a lot of his energy to dodge. Jinnan was like a beer to him, Yoma understood that it was impossible to drag out any more time. After all, if Master Yu restores his energy, he will immediately join the battle. It came to him to deliver a strong blow to the genie, push him away and immediately begin to leave here, but in order to escape... He needed to get rid of this guy as quickly as possible, and he used one of his strongest techniques called the Phantom Green River. Huge green energy began to flow into Jin Young was completely absorbed by this dark energy. But Jin En was still able to get through this green barrier and accumulate fire energy in his right hand and lightning energy in his left hand. He delivered a very strong lightning strike with his left hand directly into the enemy's body. Yoma was not ready for the fact that he would miss this blow and felt incredible pain. This could be fatal for him there. Jinan grabbed his opponent's shoulder and began to build up energy in his other fist in order to land another blow. He punched him right in the ear with his fist, and it was there that was the final in Jin Young's combination. Yoma could not withstand such an intense impact, 
and after that flew off to the side and crashed into a stone wall. Jinan now finally understood what abilities exhausted the master so much. He saw the technique that Yoma owns. He understood how his energy works. After all, even in such an exhausted state, it was difficult to deal with this enemy. Jinan understood something, if they fought on equal terms. Then most likely he would lose this battle because he could not withstand such a strong energy. He would not be able to resist it. He felt very tired in his body and fell to his knees. The guy could no longer fight. He felt that his inner strength dried up in an instant and could not understand what it was connected with, as if someone had sucked all the energy out of him. Then he remembered that Selfina had been fighting all this time using his inner reserves of magic. He did not understand why she spends so much of her master's energy on her abilities. Does she not understand what norms are and that so much energy cannot be used? Certain's voice warned the boy that something dangerous was about to happen. He needed to be careful. Jin Young immediately paid attention to this warning. Yuma suddenly stood up and made a quick dash, after which he stabbed Jinan right in the shoulder and injured him. He saw what was left of the wound on his shoulder and was very surprised that Yoma was still able to move. Yuma felt that the damage inside his body was very serious, and in this state, he could not run far from Master Yu. Yoma decided that if he couldn't run away from the battlefield and stay alive, then he needed to kill this guy before he died. He grabbed his neck with his hand and began to choke. Jinen was very exhausted and could not resist. He had no strength at all, so his opponent grabbed his neck and put him on his back. Yoma told the guy that he had seen such skills for the first time, although only a small part of internal energy was used up, but it had already recovered. He said that this guy's internal injuries also look very serious if he pours his energy into him. Jin Young's veins will burst and he will die. He was very disappointed that he failed in this task, but in parting, he wanted at least this guy. Jinan felt that he had no strength left at all. He could not even move his fingers. Certain saw that the guy urgently needs help and said that there is another way. If you use the absorption of the energy of heaven and earth, the control of the soul, then he will be able to defeat this enemy. Stay alive. No warned Jinan that if something went wrong, then there could be serious problems. But still, he didn't have time to hesitate, and it's better to try this technique than just die now. The demonic artifact began to work again. He felt that soon he would have to awaken again and use his demonic energy. Jinan was already beginning to choke and felt that he would soon die if he did not take some action. Power suddenly began to appear in him, and he felt how the artifacts began to act and fill him with new energy. Yoma did not understand what was happening now and where the guy got such great strength. He felt that the boy was squeezing his hand and was able to break it with just his fingers. Suddenly, the boy's face turned into a demonic entity that was ready to suck all the energy out of him. Yoma was very scared when he saw this face in front of him. Jinen began to suck out all the life energy from her opponent and absorb it into her body. Yoma screamed in pain. He asked for mercy, but Jinen let in a demonic entity that was not ready to spare anyone. He sucked the life energy out of his opponent's hand. It immediately began to turn into bones and skin and looked like a living corpse. Jin Young filled his body and the energy that he sucked out of his opponent. He felt that in this way, he was feeding the demon he had just awakened. He was even able to get up off the ground and walk normally, even though just now he didn't have the strength to even move his fingers. He sucked all the life energy out of Yoma's body, and now this guy looked like a corpse that had been buried underground for hundreds of years. He felt himself getting worse and worse. Jinan hit myself in the face with my palm and said that he knew that everything would happen this way. When he used this forbidden technique, he let in demonic energy, and now it's all beyond the realm of possibility, and he will have to deal with it. Selfina did not understand why the magic powers and the owner had run out, and she could no longer use them. She was upset because of this, because if she had enough magical powers to inflict a couple more blows on her opponent, she could kill him. She felt guilty for having a lot of fun and wasting a lot of the master's magical energy, but then she justified herself by not expecting the master's village to end so quickly. But she was still content with fighting this warrior, because she hadn't had fun in a very long time since now. The warrior was shocked that the magic arrows had finally stopped flying at him and hoped that the battle was finally over. He was injured on his face, 
There were scratches and abrasions. He was trying to understand what it was that had just happened to him. As soon as he realized that the danger had finally passed, he immediately fell into the water and felt that he no longer had the strength to lose consciousness. Jinan began to feel a very strong black energy inside him that made him fight the rest of the wars that were still alive. He killed all the opponents who were still alive until that moment. Enemies bled and begged for mercy, but it was useless because Jinan could no longer be stopped. The guy jumped on the rocks looking for new opponents, wanted to kill everyone who harmed him and his ally. Master Yu was on the sidelines all this time, and was watching the guy. He was surprised that this boy is still able to fight and feel so active. He began to suspect that something had happened here, because the guy needed to take a break to rest and gain strength in order to enter the next battle. But for some reason he could fight on. Jinan brutally killed all his opponents, and black energy began to stand out from him. It seems as if he was just fighting using internal forces. But his sudden look changed. The energy began to go off scale. Master Yu was afraid that his suspicion might be justified, and that the guy was now fighting not at the expense of his internal energy, but at the expense of auxiliary forces. Master Yu made his assumption that the guy transformed the art of Yoma into pure power, and by assimilating it to the fullest he was able to apply it in martial art. Jinan inflicted very painful injuries on his opponent before killing them, wanted to see how they suffer before death and ask him to forgive, the guy did not look like himself, as if something terrible had infused into him, something that made him constantly demand blood. The thirst for blood made him constantly find new opponents and brutally kill them in order to satiate his need for blood, but it stopped more and more with each kill. He and what to tear the flesh of his enemies causing them to experience incredible pain and torment. The voice in Jin Yong's head asked him to constantly brutally destroy his opponents. This voice asked him to break the bones of his enemies and disembowel their bodies, taking out the organs. Jin and put his hand inside the body of the enemy and grabbed his heart. He wanted to rip out his heart with his bare hands, and he felt the heat of this organ with his fingers. Sharp, icy sensations in his head mixed with the desire to kill and fill his hands with blood. He became a real animal. After tearing out the heart of his opponent with his bare hands, he decided to look at his hand and what he saw was disgusting. It was an indescribable, disgusting sensation that he could only realize later. Demon Certain said that the boy's internal energy increased tenfold. But the guy was not happy with this result, because half of this energy was dark and made him do cruel and vile things. Jinan could not forgive himself for sucking out the soul of two people. Most of the energy was used to reveal the energy of the stone. He did not control himself at these moments. Instead of him, the soul stone controlled his body and did things that were contrary to Jinan's will. Certain still continued to insist on his own and said that the brutal killings, it's not the worst thing that he half revealed his strength. It was already a good result. Jinan asked the demon what was happening now and it seemed to him that the demon was hiding something from him and did not finish speaking. As if he had some kind of plan about which he did not tell, Jinan Sertan began to behave as if he knew nothing and had no plan, but it all looked very suspicious. Jinan understood that the demon was hiding something from him, and from that moment decided that he needed to be careful with Sertan. Master Yu watched the boy all this time, even after the battle was over. He wanted to understand what was happening with this guy and who he was. Vijikan ran out of the mountain gorge and asked the elder if everything was all right with him. The old man answered that he somehow managed to survive, and if this guy is not blind, he can notice that everything is in order. Gi Khan came to the rest of the group and reported that they did not miss the two opponents. You allowed them to escape. Master Yu was very surprised when he saw that Gi Ha was standing in front of him and helping them in this matter. Gi Han admitted that he did not expect here in the form of Brother Yu, and if it were not for his work, he would have spent three nights drinking with him. Master Yu replied that he was very glad that his friend still likes to drink alcohol so much. He asked Gi Khan why the old man personally decided to come here and help, because it is unlikely that this decision was made only because he missed his old friend Gi Khan video, that he came here to catch those who killed his son and the people of his family. He knows that Yoma and everyone who was involved in this 
was in this place, Master Yu told the old man that Zhen Yun personally killed Yumu in front of his eyes and did it with maximum cruelty. Zhen Yun was sitting on a stone at that moment and said that it happened completely by accident. Gikan was very upset because he could not personally repay his enemy and kill him with his sword, but nevertheless he could do something else. So he approached his dead body and knelt down on one knee and then took the box which lay on his body. Gikan was glad at least that he was able to find the lost item, and this was already a good reward. For this cause, Mr. Yu said that he did not know why the Han family needed Ruby and wanted to wait for an answer from the old man, but the old man said that it was not just Ruby Gikan told a story about this stone, and it turned out that this is an unusual ruby and a real fire gem about which legends are added. Master Yu was still very dissatisfied. He said that it was very strange to see into the stone, and it did not look like a real one, because in a real stone, there should be a flame pattern inside. But this stone does not have any flame pattern. Gihan was shocked when he did not find the flame pattern in this stone, realized that it could be the most common fake, and Wijihian made his assumption that they could not get the wrong item from the Ho family Gihan, listened to the guy's version, and said that it would be very good if it was like he says, but does this mean that they want to make their Peng family their enemies? He was in a difficult situation because one person's life depended on this stone, and a fake stone is a huge problem for this person's life. Master Yu said that they have no other choice, and the only thing they can do is go to the Ho family, because standing here will not solve their problems, and they need to move out. Master Yu felt that the most important task for them all right now was to focus on the exorcists. Khan was very upset that he didn't find the right stone, which meant he would have to keep searching. At that point, the guy asked, Why don't they hand over the captured exorcists to the Wijihan squad? Jinin turned to Mr. Wijihayon and said that he needed to learn something from that person. Wijihayon replied that if you need to get information through interrogation, then it is better to do it in their fortress. Jinin did not agree with this solution of the problem because it would take a very long time to send him to their fortress, and therefore he offered to personally interrogate this guy right here and now. It would be faster this way. Han could not resist him, at least for the reason that Jin Young himself caught this guy and therefore decided to listen to him and allowed him to do it. He said that if there is no point in interrogating and this guy does not give out information, then they will take him to their fortress and entrust this matter to professionals. A. Jin Yong said that he was fine with such a plan. He decided immediately, without delay, to proceed to interrogation and begin to learn from this prisoner information that interested him. But as soon as they began to approach him, they saw that he had untied the ropes and fled somewhere. They did not even have time to notice how he did it. He has already run for ten minutes through the forest trying to get away from these people as far as possible. In the forest he met his brothers who still survived this battle. The commander of the exorcists was with his assistant, these same two escapees who could not be killed. They asked what happened and where their brother Yoma Monkan told his exorcist brothers that they failed the task and now everyone is dead. They were prevented by a strange guy who suddenly appeared and had incredible abilities. Munkan told me that of all the surviving exorcists, only the three of them killed everyone else. Sanhul was disappointed by this news and started to stop getting worse and worse. He said that if they just come back, the cult leader will kill them. Suddenly, his chest was pierced by the blade of the sword. No one expected that this could happen. In front of them stood a guy in black clothes. You want to know how he appeared here and why he moved so quietly? After all, they did not even have time to hear him. None of them. I had time to feel the presence of this stranger, which meant that he owns some unknown technique. One of this stranger's eyes glowed exactly like Jinin's eyes glowed when he let in demonic energy. Jinin, along with his allies, went to the poles in order to find the escaped prisoner. Suddenly, they came across the bodies of dead escaped exorcists. Deep in the forest, and it was very unexpected for them to see dead exorcists here. Wijihan noticed that the bodies of these exorcists were very mutilated. But nevertheless, with their clothes, one could understand that these were the two who did not manage to catch them in time and did not run away. Guan said that now there is only one escaped exorcist whom they need to understand, 
They did not know where he fled, and it was necessary to first find out if he was alive at all. Guan turned to the boy and said that the interrogation should be forgotten, because he is most likely already dead. But Jin Young said that the remaining exorcists are still alive. Jin and felt his energy nearby, and therefore could conclude that this guy is somewhere nearby, and he is still alive. He thought about the fact that behind the exorcists, there is a clan of heavenly blood. If this is true, then the escaped exorcist must be caught. He needs to be caught and interrogated to find out information about the clan of heavenly blood. The escaped exorcist was in the forest, and he was all alone. He was constantly followed by the same stranger in a black hood who killed two of his comrades, and this guy did not understand where the stranger had gone. Suddenly, he felt a very strong pain in his back. The stranger thrust the blade of his blade into his body. He pierced the exorcist's shoulder with the blade of his blade and tried to inflict a lot of pain on him. The exorcist managed to launch a counterattack and throw the stranger aside. He managed to jump back and dodge the blow without taking any damage. The stranger decided to hide in the silence of the night and fall to me in order to deliver an unexpected blow to his opponent from the darkness. The exorcist began to examine his wound and realized that it was today— that he was faced with the fact that the invisible eye is the second enemy in a day that has the ability to disappear. The stranger teleported behind him and was ready to strike again from the dark, but the exorcist managed to feel him before he struck. He waved his sword and wanted to hit his enemy faster than he could hit him, but when he nevertheless struck his blow, the enemy was no longer there, and he did not hit him. So the energy for the blow was wasted. The stranger decided to plunge a sharp blade into his leg while his opponent was distracted. The exorcist felt a very strong pain in his leg and realized that he now had to fight with two deep wounds in his body. He was not ready to give up so easily and decided to strike again using his black magic technique. The stranger grabbed his hand and called his opponent very clumsy and inattentive. He cut off his hand with his blade, after which the palaces experienced incredibly severe pain. He didn't understand why this guy didn't just kill him, why he constantly mocked him and made him feel so much pain. The stranger said that this guy is the only witness left among the exorcists. The stranger said that his task was not to leave a single witness, and therefore he was obliged to kill him right here and now, but suddenly he heard that he was beginning to be surrounded by people who were in the forest not far from him. The stranger decided to sit down on one knee and lower his blade, bowing his head in front of people who are approaching him. Jen Young came out of the forest and looked at the stranger who was now sitting on one knee. He approached the wounded exorcist and examined him. Jinin said that he had business with this exorcist and asked the stranger not to interfere in this matter out of turn. The rest of the group began to emerge from the forest and surround the stranger. He understood that he was at a disadvantage for himself and was unlikely to be able to fight them. Wijihan looked at the clothes of this man and noticed that he was clearly not from these parts and was unlikely to belong to one of his fighters. Wijihan apologized to this stranger for breaking in here and taking his prey from him. But they needed to analyze the situation and asked him to walk with them. He stood silently and did not answer anything. It seemed to them that this man was simply deciding what to do next. Suddenly this stranger disappeared somewhere, he turned into black smoke and evaporated. No one even managed to catch him. The whole group attacked the place where this stranger had just been, but they didn't succeed because he evaporated very quickly. They could not even imagine who this person was and how he got such teleportation capabilities. Jinin summoned the fairy Selfina again and ordered her to find this man in the forest, because he could not run far. Selfina was unhappy that she was again forced to work and she said that spirits cannot work so much in one day. Jinan reminded her that she sucked all the energy out of him while fighting with one opponent, and ordered her to immediately take care of this matter, and find that guy because he did not run far. She lowered her head down, closed her eyes, and apologized to the owner. She said that she would do everything now. Selfine used her magical vision to feel the footprints of this man and find him. Thanks to their power, the spirits of the forest told her where this person is now. The fairy said that there are a lot of people around him now. Jinan realized that this man was not alone all this time and had comrades with him and asked the fairy to take him to this man. 
Jinan warned all members of his group that he will go after this killer and ask the others to look into this first while he will chase him. Guan tried to stop the boy and asked him to wait. He wanted to go with him. The stranger returned to the rest of his squad. They were also dressed in black robes. He saw that many people had gathered here and was pleased that everyone was gathered in this forest. One of the fighters said that he would like to hear a report on the situation of the immortal heavenly host. The stranger replied that two members of the exorcists and all the remaining people from the Zhang Jai fortress were killed in the process. Two wars died, and the other two were very badly injured. The commander said that no strange things happened with their Chuk Chuk faction, and everything went very well for the first appearance of immortal heavenly warriors. The stranger said that everything is not as good as he thinks, and in fact there was one problem. He admitted that they could not kill one exorcist, and there were as many as five witnesses who could interrogate him, and saw the stranger with their own eyes. He said that among these people there were two guys whom he saw for the first time, and the rest of the guys were Yu Tai Jung, Bang Gi Han, and Wiji Heon. The commander asked the man in the hoodie if these people were able to reveal his identity, and the man in the hoodie answered that they could not see his face and did not know who he really was. The commander ordered everyone to return back immediately. One of the strangers was very surprised by this decision and said how they could just leave leaving witnesses behind. The commander agreed with the words of the stranger and said that they still did not reveal their true identity, and since the enemy is not easy, it is better to retreat in such an environment, there is no need to face them and suffer losses. The stranger raised his head up and said that in any case, their opponents remained at the same level of strength, but they were able to grow in their strength. And this is a good reason to play with them a little and try yourself in battle, the soldiers had to choose whose decision to support. On the one hand, they could not support the words of Captain Vera. But on the other hand, there was the Chok Chok group. The Chok Chok group continued to insist on their own, and they wanted to kill these five people who were witnesses in the forest. The captain said that he still had the right to command, and his word is law here. He said that if they make even one mistake, it will damage the reputation of the great lord. Jinan stood near the tree all this time and eavesdropped on all their dialogues. Guang noticed that all these people are very similar to real martial artists. It seems they do not want to reveal their identities, but he did not understand why they want to retreat with such power. Guang asked the boy what they would do next. Because maybe with the help of the old people and Oni, they won't be able to resist these people in two, they definitely won't be able to cope against the crowd. Jinan said that unfortunately, and we really will come out to defeat all these people, so they better retreat from here right now, and should be content with the information that they did not receive. Now they have clues Guan agreed with the boy's decision, and was ready to retreat with him right now. But due to his negligence, he stepped on a branch, and accidentally crushed it, and made a very loud sound. After he stepped on this branch, he began to justify himself to the guy, and says that it happened completely by accident, Jinan knew it was a mistake. Could cost them their lives, but nonetheless, there is no other choice. And now, they still have to confront all these people. After a couple of seconds, they were surrounded by these wars. They were everywhere to hide from them. It would not have been possible to hide from them. And the only way out that remained for them was to fight. 